Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of The Patricia J Show. Now on today's episode, we sit down with award-winning fitness expert and holistic nutritionist, Elizabeth Lopez, and talk to her about her embarking on her journey towards the hourglass workout. So here we are, everyone, today at Hourglass Workout with my girl, Liza Beth Lopez, hey the queen of Hourglass. <laughs> How are you, my friend? You're so dramatic. I'm good. How are you? I'm so good. And it's been a journey with you. We've known each yeah. other forever and, and some maybe. Teenagers. Teenagers. Yeah. Pretty much older, though. Not too much older. <laughs> Liza Beth, since I knew you back in the day, we're talking yeah. like, what, late 90s, early let's, 2000s? Let's not do That's years. Okay. Let's not do years. Okay, we'll, <laughs> but we'll keep it real. It's been, it's, been, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. You always had this vision of the hourglass. Yeah. Back then. Yeah, it's true. Moving forward to today. Now you're dominating the fitness world in the hourglass spectrum, if you will. Thanks, Talk girl. to us about being the hourglass queen. Okay. <laughs> you know, you started this movement. Um, I don't know if I'd give myself that title, but thank you. That's very sweet. Of course. For me, it just kind of started out as I've always been a thick girl. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was a thick girl from when I was 12. You know, I just I just saw it. I was like, ooh, these are these are some big thighs and some big knees. You had the thunder thighs, right? Big calves oh and just God. everything was a little thicker than every other girl mm -hmm. beside me. And I didn't love it and I did not embrace it. And I became anorexic when I was a teenager and just like fought it with everything in my being. I ran two hours a day, like I did everything wow. to try to get rid of it. And um, and eventually it just kind of, you know, something clicked and I was like, you know what, let's try working with the body. Let's wow. let's see what happens, let's just. Let's what do you think that was? What do you think changed? Um, I don't, I don't know if there was like an actual complete pivotal right. moment. I would say that I, I actually began to embrace a little bit more um, later, even later than later than when I even started Hourglass. Mm -hmm. Like when I had started Hourglass, I was I was competing and you know That's I, I was right. still trying to be lean. I was just creating very lean, condensed versions and reshaping all of my athletes <laughs> into condensed, tight Hourglass versions, either making them thicker or thinner, right. all Hourglasses. But I don't think I really embraced that it was okay that I'm never gonna be skinny. Like skinny right. for me is 130. <laughs> That's wow. like I'm so thin. You care about the scale? Uh, you did. I, I go on the scale, yeah. like especially if I have a shoot, cause like no lie, if I, if I have a magazine cover, if I've got something big coming up, yeah. I'm gonna hit those sprints. Here I'm gonna you. look at the scale and I might go on like every other day just to make sure things are, are happening. Okay. But I generally have an idea of what my weight is just for health. You know? That's the top thing, right? Yeah, health. but as far as like actually saying it's okay that I'm thick and mm -hmm. let me just work with this was when I went and studied holistic nutrition, which right. was 10 years ago. And that's when I was really just like, you know what? All of this needs to come full circle and I'm not gonna just, I'm not gonna try to be 8% body fat anymore because that was my goal yeah. at all times. I looked best on stage at 8%. <laughs> Anyone that, that knows what 8% is, that's lean. Well, a woman too that For naturally woman. has natural fat, right? Yeah, and, exactly. And holds natural fat, would you say? Yeah, yeah, it's super lean. So now I'm like, I'm okay at 19%, which is- 19? <laughs> which is still <laughs> less than me. <lean. laughs> but, uh, but for me, it still looks bigger than the average girl. So right. I think for me, I'm just very proud now of being someone that, that is thick, that will never be thin. Um, and that's okay, but just working with my shape and knowing that it's okay and sharing not this not and, and you know what the voice now isn't even just for thick girls anymore mm -hmm. It's for thin girls too because mm -hmm. now the thick is in style, which it wasn't It's so in style now now thin girls are getting in. It's just like where's your curves? Like they're just, trying to pop up. They're trying to pop now. up, but <laughs> ev everybody's beautiful everybody's You know, everybody's beautiful. Everybody's I beautiful. love that I did start out as a gymnast, as a competitive gymnast, mm -hmm. and um, and it was it was like my whole life, like that's what I did. And I remember uh, being told by the, the coach, they'd be like, don't shake the beam. And I'm just like, uh, oh. you know, and just they're just just little, there's little comments. I would be called like focused on because focused, you're yeah, because oh. I was getting a little thicker than the other girls, and they would call me like fit fat and stuff like oh. that at school because don't I was shake the fit, beam. You hit me with that but part. I was thick. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So. Um, 
Yeah, so that was like, you could feel it. Mm -hmm. And then when I had an injury, so I was doing my tumbling pass yeah. and I bent my arm all the way backwards. So it hit the floor first and it went the other way. Oh. And yeah, and that was actually the end of my career. They were just like, you can't, you can't do oh it anymore. God. So I couldn't do gymnastics anymore. And I was starting like puberty and everything like that. So oh. I was getting thicker. I wasn't training anymore. Um, so I started to get heavier and I was not okay with it. So I became anorexic. And it was tough. You came out of that. How did, how did you see the light at the end of the tunnel? <laughs> you know what I'm saying though? Yeah, it was, you know what? It was actually, um, it's kind of funny because it's it's kind of like a new form of not eating disorder because I don't want to down the sport, okay. but a, a new thing did come and it saved me from not eating, but took me into something <laughs> different, oh, which was fitness, fitness competitions. Yeah. yeah. Is um, oxygen didn't exist yet. There was none of the women's right, ones. Right, the big like, magazines. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the magazines that were in there back in the day when I was really young was like Muscle and Fitness, right. Muscle Mag, those were the ones. Those and the big ones. Those are the big, yeah. And those were those were the fitness magazines. So I picked one up, and there was this picture of this young girl. I don't like she didn't become a huge star or anything, yeah. but I just I saw her body. She was an ex gymnast as well, and her name was Alfie Newman. And you know you just remember those things. Yeah. But she was um, she competed and she did gymnastic routines and fitness on stage. And I was like I miss competing. I can do that. And she's so she was slim and muscly. Oh. Like I can still picture visualize this photo and I'm like, and it showed her diet and her workout. Really? Yeah, so I was just like, well, she's eating. See, so that's, <laughs> see, so that's your pivotal moment. Yeah, I guess that so. Is. I guess so. So but she's eating, so then? I was like, maybe I could try to follow, and it took me, like, and my family had sent me to dietitians. I was just yeah. like, yeah, of course, I'll, I'll have that in. I was not hearing anything, <sighs> anyway. I knew everything. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> I still do. I'm 12, I know everything. I know everything. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I eventually saw that, and the first, I, I was actually, like, people don't know this, I was the first fitness model champion in the history of the sport. Wow. Yeah, I did Canadian the show. or just the entire Worldwide. sport? Worldwide. Goodness, yeah. that's huge. A lot of people don't know, but Toronto, like, LA is a big mecca, but so is mm. Toronto for fitness. We, we um, lead? We, we, we do some leading up in I here. Like yeah. That. Tell me more. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so I went in and, and went into that competition and I won. They created this new category, which was um, a fitness model, which, which was just the physique round. And okay. I was just like, Okay, I'm, I'm kind of feeling this, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying the, the routine part of it and everything. Let me go and, and try it. And it was the first one ever. It was the first fitness comp model competition in the whole world. So, wow. I, yeah, it was kind of cool. And this is your first official competition? First uh, first official was the first ever fitness mo Gosh, model competition. And you took it. And I got it. Damn. So it's in the bag. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. how you do it. And it, it totally started like this fire in me where I'm just like, this is so cool yeah. and I have something to aim for, I've got kind of a reason to train, I'm, I'm eating again, which right. is good. But it was a very, it was a very strict diet. There wasn't a lot of information back then. Like okay. it was very much like, uh, like I was eating, but it was, it, I turned from being kind of <laughs> vegan-ish, yes. you know, yes. muffin and uh, mango, yeah. uh, to, um, to kind of going chicken asparagus, chicken asparagus, <laughs> chicken <day>. broccoli. <laughs> What is the ultimate hourglass figure, Elizabeth? You know what? That's it's such a good question, Thank and you. I know like I've been asked that in other interviews before, and it's always like, of course it's your typical girls, of course it's your J Lo's and your Beyonces okay. and your Kims and all the girls that kind of started the movement of curves are okay mm -hmm. from you know, and and girls that are 20 right now, they're just like curves. Have, curves have always been okay, haven't they? Because they don't know the old movement that was That's really true. skinny. It was like. Curves were, were weird, and it was just like you were fat, literally. That's like, no, you're too. fat yeah. if you had curves. And a lot of the young girls don't understand that that was the history. Um, so, I mean, I think it's so beautiful now that that curves are in all shapes. Like, I would say right now, I think Serena Williams is killing it wow. because she's yeah. a straight up thick girl. You know what I mean? She, she got is. those bodacious curves, and she rocks them in every type of outfit. <laughs> she really does rock. She's looking great pregnant. Well. She's looking amazing. Beautiful. Pregnant she's right glowing. Now. I know. Extra Killing curve. It. Extra <laughs> curve. But but yeah, there's just, just so many different like Halle Berry's a beautiful slim curve. Serena's a beautiful thick curve. Right. Like there's just there's so many shapes out there. And I think that's the thing that we need to start to do is to just embrace all of them. Yeah. How important do you find your role is, especially your voices, to those girls? When I was starting out in fitness, there really wasn't a lot of internet or anything back then. It was no. all about the magazines. If you wanted to be seen, you needed to get to a magazine, right? And I remember going to to an expo and talking to a head 
of a major publication and just being like, you know, I've submitted photos, I would love to wow. do some fitness and stuff for your magazines. Like, I was just like so young and so whatever. <laughs> and and he was just like, well, he goes, you're just not um, appropriate for females, but I could put you in our men's magazines. Wow. And I was just like, that's really not my direction. Wow. I, don't, I don't have any interest in that. I feel like I'm a shape that's not represented and I would love to be in the women's magazines. Wow. He said, you know, your hips are too big, your lips are too big, all of it's too, and I was just, I was so heartbroken. Of like, course. so heartbroken that my look was something that, my natural look mm -hmm. was something that was felt inappropriate for a female to look up to. It broke my spirit a little bit, but it also made me say, okay, you know what? If you're not gonna put me in the media, I'm gonna be my own media. And I feel like that might have been around my space time. So I was, I went hard oh, my on space. my space. Yeah. And I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna make this a business. You don't wanna put me out. I know I have something oh to share. God. And I'm gonna go and share it. So I MySpaced it and I started leading workshops on business for women in MySpace days. Teaching wow. women, I had groups of 12 at a time mm -hmm. and I taught them how their brand and they shouldn't sell themselves short and they shouldn't um, model for a bucket of protein. You oh know what gosh, I mean? You're yeah. worth something. Worth something. You Don't know? model for product. Yeah. yeah. So I started MySpace thing and then I started Facebooking. Everything was a business to me. Like, it, it wasn't my fun kind of like, let me go on and see what my homie's doing. Is right. going to... No, I was like, I need to build my brand. That's I need it. to build my product. Mm -hmm. So I think because I started so early and I already had that mindset that so many young people have now, but I've, I, I knew that. It was just like innate somehow. Social media is a place where people hide behind that. You know where I'm going with this, yeah. right? They hide. Yeah. And they feel comfortable coming for you. They feel comfortable attacking you. Oh, like so the haters? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what we're talking You're about. You're talking the haters. about the lovers, people. <laughs> like, you know, this movement here, everyone is loving it, right? Yeah. But there's haters out there. Yeah. How do you deal with that side, the ugly of social media? You know what? I'd say at first, not so well. Okay. Like, I remember my very first, like, really really mean, it was on YouTube. Ugh. YouTube used to be the worst, the worst for bad comments, but then they were smart and they did something in making everyone have an account and now like, yeah, you, they're, you're, you're not as faceless. They're kind of protecting us anymore. Now, right? yeah. yeah. And someone, it was like, go slide on a razor blade and I'm gonna rip out your hair. I was just like, oh my God, oh my like God. what is going on? What did I do to this person? I was <laughs> they just like, had an egg profile, right? I was almost in tears. Like this was so long ago and I just, I wasn't ready. Of so course. that was the first and I, I like the fact that I still remember a comment. That's the thing. Was just like, I was ready to leave YouTube forever. <laughs> wow. But then, you know, and then Instagram came and like Facebook, I didn't get a lot of hate. Instagram, because it was this whole new place and yeah. I grew really fast. You I did. was I was one of the first like fitness pages in the millions and it just like, it just and we were all and like, I don't Canadian know Canadian fitness too, you pretty much are number one. Tell us how many followers. Oh, uh, um, there's, there's like... You're so humble, but just go in for that number, girl. Uh, I guess there's about like 2 million on Instagram. Yeah. And I don't remember on Facebook, something like 2.5 or big. something like yeah. that million. So Liza, this is a part of the show called The Sweet Moment. Okay. This is a moment of nostalgia, a moment okay. where it's like, oh, I'm Elizabeth Lopez, oh my God. <laughs> and I'm on this earth to do this. Okay, okay, okay. I would say, I mean, this has been a life, lifelong journey for me, pretty much. Like, right, like I'd say, right from anorexia to really where we are now, and working with so many amazing women. Um, but I think probably the most amazing part of it is, is I have my husband now. I'm not wearing my ring now because I was working out. I forgot to put it on. But, um, but my husband, who's been like, we've been together for a minute. You know what I long mean? Time, like we've been yeah. together for a long time. He's seen almost every single stage, like literally every single stage wow. of this. And um, and so he's watched me also grow the business at first and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. And you know, I know how smart he is and, and we have different brains, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm so much like, I am the risk taker. I'm just like, let's do everything now. Let's put all of our money into it ah. and let's just go. You're like, the jumper. Yeah, I'm the jumper. <laughs> let's not even research, let's just 
Go. Yeah. Where he's like, let's think of every single possible thing that could happen. <laughs> let's budget everything, which I, I can't stand. I like, I hate that <laughs> stuff. But it's in a business, it's necessary. Yes. Um, and I knew that he had this kind of like yin to my yang, like the other side of the coin that I, mm -hmm. I, I don't possess. <laughs> so I bugged him for, I would say, maybe a year or two. Um, and it's just like, just quit your job. Just, just come help. Really? Me. It's, it's growing. Like, it's, it's so growing. So you put the pressure. And I told put him, some pressure. Just quit your job. We're gonna do this. Yeah, okay. I put a little pressure. And, and he was, he was, he was interested, but he was just like, you know, we had a house, and yeah. you know, there's, there's expenses. And, and he is that person that thinks things through. And an entrepreneur could, you don't know. We don't know. We never know. We never know. Right? Um, and literally, we had just gone through a situation where I had lost my entire life savings ah. and attempted to open a studio and got taken by a con artist. So ah, I lost every I'm penny. Sorry. Yeah, and it, you know these things happen. Yeah, they so do. You learn Unfortunately, they do. Unfortunately, yeah. they do. That's why we have lawyers and everything. <laughs> things happen. It's very true. Yeah, but um, so it was. It was not too long after that. But I'm like, it's okay, babe. We're gonna rebuild. It's all gonna be Gosh, amazing. Gosh, you still Everything's stayed good. positive. <laughs> Got to keep beautiful going. Smile. Thank you. Oh my God. But uh, but he trusted enough to be like, you know what? He had a good job, and he was like, I'm going to leave my job, and I'm gonna be a part of this team. And, um, and to have someone so close and knit and just believe yeah. and just jump in and be like, okay, let's do this together. And we're like, we were actually laughing about it this morning that we're like the new age mom and pop shop because <laughs> technically we're mom and pop Pretty shop. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's still a small business. So that would be definitely the sweetest thing. We get to see each other every day. Do we argue more? Of course we argue more. We're, we're together more. Couple. Yeah, we're All together the time. more. All the time. <laughs> but it's so kind of fun just kind of like being in this life like 100% together. Yeah. And it's nice. We're here at Hourglass. This is your headquarters. It is. Right? Yeah. Where are we? Give us the address. Tell 475 us where Queen Street West. Toronto, Ontario. I don't Come remember the postal code. <laughs> Come on down. It's Queen's Banana. Queen's Banana. And I will say, second trendiest neighborhood in the world as voted by Vogue magazine. I used to work for the government. I used to run um, community centers and oh. work with youth and all that kind of amazing stuff. And I loved it. Um, but I did leave that job. Hourglass is actually 10 years old, so that was 10 years ago. Um, and I started Hourglass. Um, very much by accident, and uh, yeah, it they was. They say nothing happens by accident. Oh, really? okay, all right. That's your maybe destiny. Not by accident. It's I don't your know. Destiny. It's destiny. <laughs> I like that. But yeah, it's true because it was like a whole chain of events that just led me to yep. kind of have to do it. And then I was gonna go back to my job, and I'm like, no, I'm I'm gonna quit, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna I'm gonna start this business. So it started out literally me and like I don't know seven to ten girls and my backpack heading over to the Sky Dome outside. That, I was one of those girls. You were one of those girls. We I were killing pictures. it at the Sky Dome when it was the Sky Dome back then. <laughs> it was actually the Sky Dome yeah. back then. And, oh and my gosh. Yeah, yeah, I had no lease. I had I had no plan. I, <laughs> I didn't know. know what I was doing. You had a vision. Yes, I had, you did. I had a vision. You had that vision. It's true. I did mm. have a vision. And but you know what it was? It was doing those first few classes with you and the girls and stuff like that, and just seeing the energy and the yeah. excitement, and that people were really loving it. It and was fun. There wasn't there wasn't boot camps back then. Mm -mm. It was it was a first of the boot camps. There wasn't circuit training back then. No, it was the there wasn't. first of the circuit training. Like this was all stuff literally that I created and then turned into something and then everybody around me was like, hey, we're gonna do that too. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay. You, <laughs> so you, you made it fun. Up. You made it fun. Because not everyone <laughs> likes to work out, you know? It takes yeah. that extra effort, or the, the, the nine to fivers, you know? We're yeah. in the hustle. Everyone's just down in their phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. sometimes find the time to fit fitness in. I agree. I think what was most important is we made it a community. We did, yeah. You know? And I it say was we, like, sorry. Yeah, yeah, girl. <laughs> it, that's, but that's the thing, it is a we. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I can't You're stand right. here and have created it. Like, Every girl that's ever came in mm -hmm. has brought something to this program. You know yeah. what I mean? So they they share it. They're the ones that come up to the events. They're you yeah. know it, it's them. You know it's it's them helping each other. It's it's just that electric energy of having women there that are actually here to support each other. Yeah. They're here to just kind of you know what I mean? Like they that female empowerment, they, right? Yeah. And uplifting each other. They want they want to help. You know, like we have this thing where we call it newbies and vets. So oh. it's like yeah. So the vets are there, but any newbies that come in, they'll be like, <laughs> okay, vets, we've got newbies, and right. we'll make sure that they're okay. And they'll I'll I'll try like we're doing new access. I'll try to partner the newbies and the mm -hmm. vets together so that they can meet someone and. 
and learn a name and you know like and get the technique down because your vets would know more yeah. so then mm -hmm. but it's and the technique's important but it really is also just that that having a little a little like a little family because yeah. we work so hard we go to our nine to five yeah might have our kids like we don't have that that play time in a sense it's true as adults and it is fun it fitness be fun. can be fun it should be fun and if it's fun you're going to show up i wasn't ever planning to franchise it wasn't like i'm going to be in all these different places right, it, right. it wasn't the goal it was i'm going to run hourglass and that was this is going to be that right and, here and eventually we'll have a big gym and this was supposed to be just that's it that's that's where it is really but it was it was kind of along the lines where girls that were in class um kept saying to me i, I want to teach like i would love to do this as well and i was just like it just yes. didn't occur to me because they weren't trainers they were lawyers they were real estate agents they wow. were doctors and i'm just like Oh, mm -hmm. but you have, you have a job, and they're like, but this and a this good is, job, yeah, and yeah. a lot of good jobs, and they're like, but I just wanna, I wanna help people. I, I like wow. the energy, I like the feeling, mm -hmm. but it's been exciting. It's it's there's it's the most awesome thing to know that other people that it's touched them in some way, yes. and they want to bring it back. That's just like, and that you it's pretty cool. Lives. It's pretty cool, and that they're and that they're going to, yes. you know. And it so. all started here in Toronto. But what, what Toronto? Yes. So let's talk about that, <laughs> okay. Miss Toronto. So we funny. are in Toronto. We are indeed. As a fitness influencer and a fitness mogul, being in Toronto, you laugh at that. So you're so humble. <laughs> I love that about you. What does it mean to you to be Torontonian, but be on this heightened wave of success? I'm so proud to be from Canada, and so proud to be from Toronto. I think we are the best city in the world. I love that yeah. we're just this melting pot where everyone just just like the world lives here. Yeah, yeah. it's just home, and it's just great. So being able to be here and just kind of travel out to other places. Yeah. I don't even know how to say it. To to do Cosmo or to be to do Flair, to do just like any of these like things that are major to have Chloe Kardashian reach out and be like I know. Hey I want you to be on my app and it's, it's so just crazy. like crazy. Okay, like me, I'm just over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but just from Toronto, I'm right? From Toronto, okay. yeah. So it's it's cool and it's just uh, it's very it's very humbling yeah. and you know, there's so many amazing people in this city. Um, and I feel like in the music industry, mm -hmm. that's obviously like blown up and people have realized oh, how yeah. amazing we are based on that. And I feel like we have so many amazing people in the fitness industry too. I feel like I'm just one of them. In and Toronto? I, in Toronto. Yeah. And I feel like that will start to blow up Big even time. more too. And there's going to be more fitness people popping up and becoming more like pop in <laughs> up pop near in, yeah because in. because they're so great yeah you know and with social i feel like they'll get more recognized and everything like that and then i feel like there'll be a bunch of us that are just like yeah we're from toronto the mm -hmm. best city we've got all the fitness people here you went from watching a model that inspired you in the pages of a magazine yeah. to now being a girl that's inspiring that next girl in Yay. the pages of the magazine mm -hmm. how does that feel liza um, What's that like? You know what? I, I'd have to say I don't really stop and think about it too yeah. often because it just, I don't know. You just do it. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I feel, I don't know, I feel funny like thinking <laughs> that I'm like anything and any, you know what I mean? Like it's just like, I just feel like I just want to so keep humble. providing good to content and be there like for the girls that are in the program. So whether they're here in Hourglass or they're on my online training wall right. or whatever, I just want to be there with them and chatting with them and just hearing their stories and just the more I hear from them and hear what they want to do, it's the more that I can create for them, right. you know, and just kind of watch them build their journeys and build their stories and, and watch a lot of them become trainers and become mm -hmm. successful trainers. And a lot and, have. And a lot yeah. have. And I think that that's what's meaningful to me. Like, I'm not trying to be like, you know, like, I don't know. You're I think I'm being I've, you and yeah. you're getting success from that. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think I've pulled even away a little bit from like the modeling aspect for right. it, from it and stuff. Like, you know, I'll still do that, but I I, I like watching people grow, which sometimes just pains me because I'm just like, it's not ready. It needs to be better. Like, that's uh, just you though. <laughs> It'll never be perfect, even uh, though it is. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. But Liza, obviously, in many eyes, you are the image of fitness perfection. In the eyes of those at <laughs> Forbes, we're talking to you. <laughs> Number eight, top influencer in fitness on the Forbes list, 2017. <laughs> I know you're Miss Humble. But that's huge. That was cool. That's like a huge, yeah. huge accolade, if you yeah, will. Yeah, that How was pretty that dope. that feel? Because that's major. That one, like, I, I don't know. I was just surprised, you Why know? Why were you surprised? I don't know. 
Because you're just little old Lazabeth doing her yeah, thing, what she loves. You know, like me and Hubs will just be like, we're just working here. Just yeah. We're just both on our computers <laughs> like this, and then we go teach, and then we're back like this. Right. So when people recognize or reach out, it's always, it's just, yeah, it's just humbling. It's just like, damn, we must have done something right. Okay, Liza, take a look at step one. Okay. Let's do this. You're gonna do some booty stuff? Yes. Woo! <laughs> okay, so this we're gonna do, I'm gonna take Patricia down onto the ground. Okay. And we're gonna do probably one of the most important things before you are gonna do some booty building, and that's just gonna be a little hip release. Okay. <laughs> so what you're gonna do is we're just gonna get the foam roller right under that hip area, so okay. just on one side. So you can kind of like spread a little bit and just kind of get, yeah, right in there until you feel, and we're trying to get to her hip flexor area, which is like right in here. So now that we've released the hip a little bit. Now we're actually gonna go in and we're gonna activate the booty. Okay. So put this around your knees. He's dangerous, guys. So you're opening your knees and lifting your bum at the same time, ready? Okay. And it's kind of like a side plank-ish in a way. Oh, so you mean. I love it. Oh, okay, <laughs> so, let me try. So drive so, your knee open. Drive yep, your knee open. Yep, yep, yep. And, and leave this then. one, and leave this knee on the floor. I'm gonna do it in front of you. Show me. So you do it together. So we're going like that. Okay. Up. Yeah. And down. You got it. And squeeze. That is activating. Yeah, because we're activating this one and this one. Woo! That's getting double really the motion. Good. Yeah. Wow. And really get that squeeze. One thing that you really need to focus on when you're activating is the squeeze. It's the most important part. So when you come to the top, flex, push open and hold for a second, then control it and do it again. Wow. This hip starts to fall, so we need to push up on this side and say, flex, booty, flex. Go flex, ahead. booty, flex. There you go, and that flex, does help. Flex, booty, flex. <laughs> Do it. Don't the fail bump. me now. <laughs> lower the bump. Don't fail me now. And bring it back up, and focus into lifting that side and keeping everything even. Uh, and bring it down again, and control, wow. and drive it up again. All right, Liza, so what's the fourth movement, fourth okay. exercise? The next one is the typical of the squat. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we want to really feel the floor. So I like to at least just kind of do this. I feel the floor, I spread my toes, and I really connect. Got it. Okay, so yeah. we're strong core. Yeah. We've connected to the floor all connected. the way through our feet. Mm -hmm. Now, push your knees open, push your feet open. Keep your feet connected as we come down. Core is staying strong, so our chest is staying up. Okay. Good. Core strong. Core strong. Are we pushing? Yes. Yeah, you, keep, uh, you stay down. You stay down. Okay. Good. Now keep pushing against my hands. Yes. Do you feel that? Because you're all pushing on the open on the outside. Yeah. Now I'm gonna take away, but you're gonna keep pushing open. Keep connecting to the floor. Keep okay. driving to the final movement for today, which is it. gonna be the deadlift. Okay. Okay, because I feel like no booty program is complete without a deadlift in all it. Right. Now the reason we add weight is if you want to add size, you need to add weight. It is like a thing. <laughs> you can definitely stay strong and really fit without weight, but for adding kind of that pop here and here and all yes. those good places, ah. you wanna put a little bit of weight in your hand. And I think you did it. Am I feeling the back too? Uh, you should be, are you? I do. Okay, and put them down. Ah! Right there. It feels good. <laughs> put them all the way Thank down. Thank you. You did so good. Thank you. From the hourglass queen herself. I love Top you. Top five moves that you could do at home Woo. to engage the hourglass. Engage the hourglass. <laughs> and, and the glutes. And the glutes. <laughs> Elizabeth, okay. when all is said and done, what do you want people to remember you for? Ooh. So I still feel like I have a lot to do yes. at this point, so I feel like it's, it's not over yet. There's still more no to way. come. But um, I don't know, I mean, I guess um, one thing that I love is, is all of the girls that have taken the classes and that hopefully they're taking something from it and they're, they're learning about health and they're learning about, you know, just, just kind of feeling good, and right. that fitness isn't just about a look, that it's also about, it's just kind of about feeling good and, and feeling healthy and understanding health versus counting calories, right. understanding health versus what the scale says, and appreciating their physique, and that, that every size is completely beautiful. You know, with or without curves, every girl's sexy. And what do you say? <laughs> Everybody beautiful. Yeah. Say with me, girl. Everybody's, Everybody's beautiful. beautiful. Yay! <laughs> <You're so cute. laughs> Thank you so much, Liza Beth. I've learned a lot. You took me back on a journey yeah. from beginning to middle to where you're going because it's not the end just yet. That's true. Absolutely not. <laughs> Thank you so much.
So thank you again for your time. And thank you guys for watching The Patricia J Show. Remember, we are socially savvy, just like you, Liza Beth. And you can hit us up on all the social media platforms. You're seeing them right now below on your screen. But also don't forget, use our hashtag, hashtag The Patricia J Show. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>